How are you doing? Nice to Tom. see you. I'm Jonathan. Come and sit down. All right. Let's have some lunch. Let's do it. Tom, like, I can't believe you're even allowed out, <laughs> let alone allowed to come for lunch. Yeah. I mean, you're very close to a serious competition that people may be aware of. What's so special about preparation for diving, which I guess might be different <clears throat> to other sports? When it comes to diving, no matter how much you train, whether you're European champion, world champion, world series champion, when it comes to the Olympic Games, you get one shot every four years. And even if you win the prelim, you win the semi-final, when it comes down to that final, everything's to zero. That is the key to winning, is being successful and being able to control up here. Obviously, going into 2012, it was like, a, wow. wow. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, talk about a serious drink. Cheers. Good to see you. Give this a try. Mighty. It's definitely got a kick, but it's good though. <laughs> do you ever, when you're up on that 10 meter board, do you ever just, just I don't know what pops into your head, just like the shopping list? Sometimes. Does that ever happen? Yeah. I mean, when I'm stood up on the end of the board, sometimes you, <laughs> the most random thoughts will come into your head. Like sometimes I stand on the end and I'm like, oh, I need to get bin bags on the way out. <laughs> I've got a lucky monkey. To, you're a lucky monkey? Yeah, I've had right. it since I was nine years old. <laughs> like in Beijing 2008, <laughs> lucky monkey would be sat next to me and it always used to have to face the diving boards to watch me and that was like a bit of a ritual I had. How much, I was going to talk to you about, I mean, you can't talk about the Olympics now yeah. without talking about doping to a certain extent. There's no reason why you should be a drug cheat. There's no reason that you have every resource available to you to find out which drugs are on the banned list, which are not. Right. You know that every year there's a new list that you have to check. Every time you take anything new, whether it's a new brand of paracetamol, a new brand of ibuprofen, right. and whatever it is, you need to check it on the website to right. make sure. And these are, you know, presumably <coughs> if you're not checking it personally, you, yeah, you have, have to. nutritionists, but these you know, nutritionists who are managers, these people are checking it also, right? They do check, check it, it, but no, that it's not their it's job. Down the it's down to the athlete. Okay. It's the athlete's responsibility. And I think the testers are always like three years behind yeah. everyone. So they're, at the moment, they're in the process of testing every single sample from 2012. Right, so they could, come, they could point. come in now and, yeah. and ask. I had a, a drug tester turn up when I had, was about half an hour before I was about to leave for an A-level exam. And they had to, they just have to follow you around. So they follow you to the loo, right? They and follow you to the loo. You have to put your trousers down to your knees, your t-shirt up to and your chest. And they're just there. Spin around 360 and they have to watch it Really? Come out. They have to. They have literally. <laughs> so if you're pee shy, then you're. Wow. They're like, oh, so, so what are you gonna do after this? Are you out, are you out for dinner tonight? And you're like, yeah, I'm out for dinner. <laughs> like, let me concentrate on peeing, please. <laughs> Actually, because in 2012 it was obviously one of the most like amazing experiences to be able to win an Olympic medal in front of your home crowd. And then when I got back to training after that, I had 10 days off because I had the Junior World Championships. I came back and I just, I, I was in this really, really weird place where I think if you ask most Olympians after the Olympics, I, I was like in, on such a down, I was like, I don't want to be here, like, what am I doing? Wow, that's pretty incredible. So you were, yeah. you were ready to give up, were you? I was, I was in such a, like, and I was so terrified about one of my dives in particular that every time I went to training, I was you know, so scared to be up on that 10 meter. Like, and it was taking over my life, like I wouldn't walk on three drains, I wouldn't walk under a ladder, I, I wouldn't eat, I would have to eat the same thing. And uh, it was like this really weird situation. And was then- that specifically about the, the 10 meter dive then? That, so was that... it was about the twisting dive that I had to redo in the Olympic final okay. with all the flash photography. Yeah, yeah. And ever since then I had this complete like trauma about it. Yeah. But I honestly think if I hadn't have met Lance, my now fiance, sure. I don't think I'd be diving. Like knowing someone that was so good in their field, you know, happy with what they were doing and loving what they were doing. It was like, you know, I want that back. Like, what do I have to do in order to get that back? And my new coach said, 
but okay, we're gonna learn a new dive. And I was like, okay, what's that dive gonna be? And she was like, a forward three and a half somersault, one twist. And I was like, is that even possible? Like, who's done that? And she was like, well, I don't know if it's possible, and that's why we're gonna try it. And I was like, <laughs> that's right. Encouraging. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I've got a video to show you of it. And I was like, oh, so someone has done it. And they were like, ah. She was like, yeah, kind of, but not exactly. So she showed me this YouTube video of a Russian swing, like in the circus, somebody <laughs> doing it into a pool. And I was like, they've got a Russian like a swing, like flinging right. you into the air. And I was like, how am I gonna do that off a 10 meter? So we literally just had to experiment and I learned this new dive. You know, it is a bit of a riskier dive and it's a massive risk to take for the Olympics to learn a new dive. But at the same time, you have to risk everything in order to get everything, you know? Um, you mentioned the um, you coming out, I guess. And, yeah. And I was going to ask. It was was it five? No, was it four years ago? Five years ago? How long ago was it? December twenty, December second, twenty thirteen. Okay. Lots of people told me not to do it. Right. And that it would end my career. Career for yeah. sponsorship and end yeah. my because you know it's I, it's not like I was in the entertainment industry. Mm. I was in a sport industry. Mm. And who wants to sponsor a gay athlete? The big fear that I had was the um, the you know, the public perception of like, would people then all of a sudden like hate me? Like you always build up to be the worst thing or like the end of the world. And then actually it was fine. And I was kind of, the I guess one of my biggest fears was being known as the gay diver. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be known as the gay diver. And the one thing that I think now is that I'm really proud and happy about is the fact that I've never once been called the gay diver, sure. like yeah. it's Tom Daly the diver, not mm. the gay diver. Sure. So we're going to predict it here right now. When you pick up gold in Rio, um, right. can, <laughs> you, can you imagine what that'll feel like? I mean, what? I mean, you could lock you me in a dark imagine. room for the rest of my life, and I'd be happy. You know, it sounds sad, but it's the life of an athlete. Well, look, um, Tom, thank you. Should we uh, rock and roll? It's yeah, been a pleasure. It's Absolute been great. Pleasure. Didn't manage to finish my drink, but it was. Next time, Tom, next time. Next time we'll hit the bar. Yeah, exactly. When you get gold, yeah, we'll that's come. the plan. A proper drink. <laughs> <laughs>